All right. We're back after the break, and I pray by the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, we'll do justice to the topic of why Muhammad cannot be a true prophet according to the criteria given by inspired scriptures of the only true God that exists, Yahweh Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God revealed in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Savior who lives. Now, before we do that, before we get into the evidence, I know we have a few callers waiting, so I'll try to take a couple of them. However, do, do be patient with us. We can't take all the calls one after the other because we do have to return to the topic and give some evidence. We're going to be fruit inspectors by the grace of God Amen. using the Bible as the criterion because the Quran tells us to use the Bible. And we're going to expect the fruits of Islam. And you'll see, well, I hope you'll see, if you bear the image of God, although tainted by sin, still it hasn't been effaced. If you bear the image of God, you have the law of God written in your hearts, and you'll see, you just realize that these fruits are evil, and Mama can't be a true prophet of God. Now that said, let's take the first caller. Before the show is over. <laughs> Before our time is up. Can't hear. Hello? Yes, can you turn down the volume to your internet can or your you TV? Yeah, can you hear me? Go ahead. Oh, hi. Uh, how are you doing? God bless you. What's your question, friend? I can't hear oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, my name is Devin. I'm calling out of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. I just had a question as far as with Muhammad. Yes. Um, he, okay, so he was a false, so he was a false prophet, and that's proven. Okay. Um, my thing is, my, my my comment is if you can just pray for a, a close friend of mine, uh, my girlfriend actually, uh, her name is Lakaya. She actually is a Muslim, and, uh, you know, I, I give her truth uh, by the Spirit of God um, that's bestowed upon me, you know. Yes. And I just ask that you guys just pray for her. Um, but What's her yeah, name? I, I, her name What's is that? Rakaya. Okay. Rakaya. Uh, Rukaya? Rakaya. Yeah, Rakaya. And you said you're a believer and she's your girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let, as, as a brother, take this as brotherly advice from a brother who loves you because you said you're a believer. Because you're a believer, I'm duty-bound, I'm bound to the Lord to share, you what the, share with you what the Scriptures teach. First of all, we'll be praying for salvation because we want to see every Muslim get saved, especially your girlfriend. But as a brother to a brother, I hold you to the standard of Scripture. None of us live perfectly. None of us here can say we live the scriptures perfectly, but we strive by the Holy Spirit to try to live the commands of the Lord perfectly. Let me give you some brotherly advice because I hear this often. I hear about Christian men dating non-Christians or Christian women dating non-Muslims. That's a no-no. 1 Corinthians 15.33, let me give you some scriptural advice. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. How much more when you're going out with a woman whom you're, you plan on marrying and being intimate with, if she's a disbeliever, it's going to affect your walk with the Lord, especially if you have children. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 33. But 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, speaks to your issue even more explicitly. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, here's what it says, my brother, and I pray by the Holy Spirit you receive it, because it's scriptural. If not, then I pray the Lord merciful, mercifully and gently leads you to repentance, because this is what the Scripture teaches. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. And it's not just for you. Anyone listening who's in a relationship with a non-Muslim, that's a no-no. I'm sorry, a non-Christian. My bad, I'm sorry. Non-Christian, no-no. And secondly, if you're sold out for Christ, you must maintain sexual purity. The Bible forbids premarital sex. Where? 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 5. 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 5, Paul says, that he, he, his desire would be that all of us remain celibate so he can be undivided in serving the Lord. But he goes, however, not everyone has this gift. Not everyone's given the gift to be celibate. So he says, if you burn with passion, notice what he says, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 5, each man should have his own wife, doesn't say girlfriend, and each woman should have her own husband, doesn't say boyfriend. If you're burning with passion, pray to God to give you the grace to control it until you find a godly wife or a godly husband. But no sex, no physical intimacy before marriage, that's a no-no. Now, in 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18, and this is for you and everyone else who may be in the same situation that you are. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. Marriage is a yoking of two people who come together and become one flesh in the sight of God. 
This is applicable to marriage, not just your friendships. If it's telling you don't have unbelievers as friends where you revolve your life around, how much more does this apply to women that you want to marry or men that you want to marry? Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Nothing. Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? It can't. Because the moment you turn on the light, there goes darkness. Darkness is the absence of, absence of light. You can't have light and darkness in fellowship. Because one cancels out the other. And you are light. She's darkness until the Lord saves her, right? right. What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Does Christ sit and have fellowship with Belial? Sip tea with Belial? God forbid such blasphemy. Christ has no fellowship with Belial. Belial stands condemned by the Lord Jesus. So then what right do you have to, bond, to, be, one, to be yoked with an unbeliever when it comes to husband and wife relationship? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Answer, nothing. What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? No agreement. For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, and I pray that you receive this, and everyone else Amen. listening receives this Amen. by the Holy Spirit. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Notice, you who are part of the world, come out of the world, separate from the world, and God will receive you. If you fellowship with the world, then you'll be stained, you'll become unclean, and bring the discipline of the Lord over you in your life. And you don't want to be disciplined of the Lord, do you? Finally, verse 18, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. My advice to you, brother, let her go. You're not her savior. You can't open her eyes or her heart. Let her go, entrust her to Christ, pray for salvation, walk on. Christ is her savior. The Holy Spirit will open her heart and minds. The Holy Spirit doesn't need you to do it, especially when you're in a relationship that's contrary to the revealed will, will of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not honor that, but it'll discipline you. So I pray you receive that, and I pray by the God's Spirit you're convicted to do what is right. Let her go. Is Jesus worthy that you give up everything, even your own life for him? Amen, he is. Then you need to be willing to give up this relationship because it's contrary to Scripture. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God. So, Lord, bless you, brother. I hope you take those passages to heart and may the Lord move you to act upon it in obedience as a sign that you truly love the Lord more than yourself. And I pray that for all of us, that we truly obey the Lord for his glory. Amen. Now, with that said, I'll take another caller. Another caller, then we'll impact the data. Next caller. We got a next caller? Hi. Hi. How are you today? By the grace of God, I'm wonderful. As long as I'm in love with Jesus, I'm blessed. I just, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for all your work. Um, Amen. You know, Amen. It, it's been a few months that I, I've actually uh, been able to tolerate you, <laughs> being uh, coming from Islam. Coming oh, from you used to be a Muslim? Muslim? I used to be a Muslim. Glory to Jesus, you come to know Jesus. We pray the Lord preserve you in his love forever. Praise God. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Um, I just, I wanted to make a few points. I've Sure. Lately, I've been bombarded with my family um, and uh, questions and, of course, you know, accusations of how I could dare possibly question the Prophet of, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. So um, I, I just, it, it's really, it's gotten a little bit hard for me, and um, I just want to know what, your opinion is on, on how to approach it in a way that maybe it might click with them a little bit better than it has been. Yeah. Uh, first of all, expect that you're going to go through tribulation with family members because that's what Jesus said. He said, count the cost. In fact, I'll read it for you. In Matthew 10, verses 34, all the way to 39. I'm going to read what the Lord says about your situation because he's talking about people like you who have to leave one religious tradition to follow Christ and the persecution that results from doing so. This is what he says to you. Do not suppose that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I do not come to bring peace but a sword. Now he's not talking about a physical sword, but a metaphorical sword, as the context makes plain. Here's the sword that Jesus is talking about. For I've come, for I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, 
a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. And that's what you're facing right now. Because Jesus brought you to himself, now your family members have turned against you. This is what he means that he came to bring a sword. Because whether you like it or not, if you follow Christ and the members of your family don't do so, they will persecute you. But now Jesus says this to you. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. If your parents' affection means more than Jesus, Jesus says you're not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And cross is a painful instrument. It was one of the most painful ways to die. So Jesus is saying, following me is going to be painful. It's not going to be a walk in the park. But I'm worthy and I'll give you the power to endure the pain until you enter his glorious presence. That's Jesus' promise to you. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. So you're going through exactly what Jesus said you'd go through because you followed Christ and your family members haven't. If it gets so bad where you can't live there, my advice would be to relocate, move somewhere where you find godly Christians who love you, surround you and be a community to you, pray for you and help you in your struggle. Because that's what the church is. Find a solid church that really believes in the teachings of Christ because those people will surround you and be there for you prayerfully as well as emotionally, and if need be, even financially. They're there. Find them wherever you live. Secondly, the way you win your family to Christ is by your transformed life. If they don't see no difference between what you were and what you are now, then to them, all you did was abandon one religion for another. But if they see a true inward transformation, where you're not like you used to be, you're much more loving, much more compassionate, much more, you know, just passionate and and have no doubt that you're on the path to salvation that transformation will leave an impact upon them more so than just your words i'm not saying don't preach but if your preaching is not tolerated then preach by your actions and by your actions god's spirit will use it to get their attention and then come to you and say you know what we've seen you all these years you're different you're not that same girl that you know that was that troublemaker or that disrespectful person you're not miserable like you used to be. You're, you're not depressed like you used to be. You're not full of hate. What happened to you? And that's when you can tell them, Jesus happened to me. What he, can do to me, what he did for me, he can do for you. That would be my advice for you, sister. That's my advice. Now, CL, I, you I want... appreciate that. That helps. Let's see. I'll also add something because he used to be a former Muslim. What happens to you when you have former Muslim or Muslims who are in your life who see you and persecute you. What is? What do you do, and how do you respond, and what would, you, would be your advice to her? Um, I understand what you're going through. Uh, this is going to happen to anyone who le leaves Islam or leaves any um, false ideology for Jesus Christ. When I left Islam, I had my best friend in the world curse me in the name of Allah <laughs> uh, and cut off all contact with me. All, all my friends, all the people that I spent daily time with, who um, I thought were there for me. And when I tried to still keep a contact with them, I didn't just cut them off. I wanted to stay in contact with them um, as friends and even have dialogue with them. But they cursed me in the name of Allah. They, they prayed for Allah to destroy me and to kill me. <laughs> um, they, they didn't return my calls. They unfriended me on Facebook and all these other things. They went around telling people that I had been possessed by a jinn, that I was majnoon, that I went crazy. Um, so this is, you have to expect this to happen, um, unfortunately. These are your loved ones, and you love them, and they love you, but uh, this is spiritual. There's a spiritual battle going on, something you may not see with your eyes or perceive with your ears or through the senses. So I, you need to stay prayed up. Amen. You need to stay on your knees praying. beseeching the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. You need the Holy Spirit to indwell you, to transform your heart. Because walking as a Christian is the hardest thing in the world. This walk as a Christian that I've been on for two years is harder than trying to keep the Quran and Sunnah. Because keeping the Quran and Sunnah and being a Muslim, that's something I did externally. Going to the mosque for Ramadan, and that, that's something you just do externally. But being a Christian is something you do internally. Exactly. Right? I have to constantly, every day, repent and check myself internally. And that's ten times harder than trying to follow the Sunnah. You know, so you need to beseech the Lord. You need to storm 
the, the, the throne of Almighty God to ask him to give you the power to continue to Amen. walk every day as a Christian Amen. and not fall away and not fall back and not backslide. Yeah. And like I said earlier, you need to speak the truth in love. We have truth yeah. and we have love. We don't have one or the other. So you come with truth and love. You need to love them regardless of what they do or what they say to you. Just like Christ loved his enemies, he commanded us to love our enemies you, these are your family members, not your enemies, but if they behave like enemies towards you, you need to just show them love. So when they curse you, you bless them. When they Amen. pray against you, you pray for them. Transform life, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So you have to just walk in the Spirit and pray for that Spirit to be upon you. And I just pray for you, and I, and I pray that the Lord gives you that power and fills you with the Holy Spirit and allows you to be able to walk and be an example of Christ's likeness before your family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. By the Holy Amen. Spirit, you can do it. Did you have a question, sister, or do you need... Uh... I, I did, actually. Go ahead. Just one more thing. Uh, I. Wh what about death threats? How do, you, oh, yeah. how do you go about dealing with that from family members? Well, I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't take them lightly, and you have the right as a Christian to appeal to the local authorities for protection, because God uses various agents to protect you. He protects you by His Holy Spirit, His holy angels, but He also uses human agents like uh, the government agencies, police force to protect you. If you're being threatened, don't take it lightly. You know, to go to the police and file a complaint is not being unchristian, because even in Acts 23, if you go to Acts 23 and you read from verse 16, Paul's nephew, his sister's son, told Paul there were a group of Jews who had taken an oath not to eat anything until they would kill Paul. Paul, as a Roman citizen, appealed to the Roman guards for protection and they armed him with armed guards protecting him, you know, fully equipped with weapons, ready to kill anyone who would make an attempt on his life. If Paul could appeal to the protection of Roman soldiers, that shows you that as Christians we can appeal to local authorities. So my, my advice to you, my strong advice to you is contact the police, tell them you've been threatened, and don't let it go because take it seriously. There have been people killed in America called honor killings, right, where... Muslim women have spread mischief, like he was talking about fitna or, you know, fasad. And in order to remove the stain from the family name, a loved one, a family member, killed that woman. And that brought them great honor among the Muslim community. So take it seriously, but don't get to the point where you despair, because Christ, God Almighty, loves you and will protect you. And pray that he protects you. Pray that he gives you the grace to endure anything. Even if you have to die as a martyr, he's worthy, because you're going to enter eternal life. He's real. But... Go to the local authorities and say, I've been receiving death threats, and these are serious, and trust the Lord to stir up their hearts to grant you the protection that God has for you. So do that. Paul did it. You can do it. It's in Acts 23. So I encourage you, contact your local authorities and find a church, solid church. Go to the pastor and say, this is my testimony. I used to be a Muslim. I love the Lord. My family's against me. They're threatening to kill me. And if it's a true church that loves the Lord, they'll get personally involved to help you find the protection that you need. So find a solid church sooner than later. And if you want, you can email me your information. It will be private just between you and I, and I'll try to find a, a local church that will be solid, loves the Lord, and will come to your aid. But send me an email. You can find my email by going to answeringislam.org, answeringislam.org. Go to individual authors. Individual authors, look for my name, Sam Shimoon. You'll find my email. Let me know who you are, and we'll take it from there by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever happens, your life is in the hands of the Lord. Nothing can happen to you unless the Lord has a purpose for it happening. So trust in Him and use the means that God has given you to protect yourself. One of those means, local authorities, just like Paul shows us in his example in Acts 23. Thank you. Anything, I, I agree, and I appreciate that. We appreciate you and your boldness, and we pray God preserves Amen. you. Because if you're in the Holy Spirit, He'll preserve you. We believe you belong to the Lord, so He'll preserve you. Amen. All right, well, you guys have a great night. And oh, you God too. bless you. Contact bless me you. if you need information, please. I will. Thank you. Lord bless you, sister. And that's a reminder for our audience who are watching this live and who will be watching it archived. You see the tribulations and the trials that these Muslims go through, even in America, who we'll abandon Islam for Christianity. So Christians, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, pastors who are watching this, you, you need to be bathing these converts in prayer. Pray for this sister. Pray for C.L. Edwards. Pray for us. The Lord will intervene and preserve them because even in America, they don't feel safe. 
Can you believe this? They don't even feel safe in America because some Muslim will seriously go about trying to kill her. But we know Christ God Almighty is their preserver and her protector. Pray for these people and churches and pastors come alongside them, not just prayerfully, but in person. Take them in. Bring them in your homes. Provide for them and give them the community that they have lost. They lost one community. And now they need another. And that's what Jesus says. If you've given up families for me, he says that he'll give us a hundredfold in this life. Fathers and brothers and sisters. So she needs a Christian community. So churches, you know, step to the plate and meet her needs because it's a command of the Lord. You know, so I, I just hope that they'll come alongside her prayerfully. Amen. Amen. Do you want to say something else, brother, before we unpack some of these things? Oh, yes. Um, as you can see, this is real, right? This is not a game. Exactly. You know, people, when they leave Islam, you're putting your life on the line for Jesus Christ. That's right. It's, it's, it's not a joke. You know, this is, um, this is not just, you know, I believe, you believe, and they believe, and maybe, maybe we whatever. No, this is <laughs> oh, real. Boy, that's this is real life. Exactly. You know, you heard what this young lady said. Her family, she has family members threatening to kill her because of her turning to Jesus Christ as Lord. This is not a game or a joke, and, I, and just all the Christians need to lift her up in prayer, lift all the ex-Muslims up in prayer, lift just, and like I told her, I tell myself and I tell you, stay in prayer. Amen. Fasting and prayer, we need it.